Tonight, we have a distinguished speaker, a man of many talents, uh, and he's here today to present his combined interest in math and magic. On the math side, he graduated from Carnegie Mellon and from Johns Hopkins University, and uh, he is a professor currently at Harvey Mudd College. On the magic side, he's appeared on, if any of these sound familiar, CNN, NPR, The Colbert Report, The New York Times, uh, Wired Magazine, Scientific American. As you can tell, he is absolutely qualified, and if you're not excited now, I don't know what will make you excited, so please <laughs> allow me the pleasure of introducing Dr. Arthur Benjamin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Art Benjamin, and I am a mathematician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and magic to do something I call mathematics. But before I get started with anything too mathematical, I thought I'd begin with a magic trick. It has nothing to do with math, really. It's just a really cool trick. But for this, I'll need a volunteer to assist me, <laughs> someone I do not know. And let's see, okay, I do not know you. What's your name? Hi, my name is Tate. Let's give Tate a nice round of applause. <laughs> Tate, before I begin, I have an important question to ask. Have we ever met before? No. Oh, you seem proud of that fact. <laughs> but that's good, because Tate, I'm going to show you and everyone here a card trick that has never been seen before. Never been seen before because no one can see the cards. Take, if you would, pick a card, any card at all from the deck. Good. Look at the card, show it to everyone, but do not let me see it. <laughs> I will shuffle the rest of the cards so you see they're not in any particular order. Take, I'd like you to place the card back inside the deck, but just to make it interesting, turn the card upside down first. Upside down, just like that. Good. Slide it in. Notice all the cards are face up except for Tate's, which is face down. Now watch carefully as this took me years of practice. Watch. 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 As I make the deck of cards disappear from my hands, reappear inside of this box, a box which only moments ago, Tate, was empty. <laughs> and I realized, Tate, what you were doing a moment ago was just a figment of your imagination. But what was the card for that brief second, at least, that you imagined that you selected? Tate, what card did you imagine? Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts. That's amazing, Tate, because you'll notice in this deck that one card, and only one card, has been turned upside down. Would you be so kind as to show everyone the upside up card, the ace <laughs> of hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, while you're trying to figure that one out, I have another question for the audience. By any chance, did anyone happen to bring with them this evening a calculator. If you have one, perhaps you have one on your phone or something, and if you're comfortable using it, raise your hand. I need a few people to help me out with their calculators. Okay, we've got one, and two, and three, and okay, four. With the four of each, please join me up here on stage. Let's give these volunteers a nice round of applause. Now, since I have not had the chance to work with these calculators, I need to first make sure they are all working properly. Uh, would somebody get us started by giving us a two-digit number? Sir, how about a two-digit number? 20. 21. 22. 22. And another, a larger two-digit number. Uh, go ahead. 46. Multiply 22 times 46. Make sure you get 1,012 exactly, or the calculators are not working. Do I get 1,012? 1,012. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, I noticed that took some of us a little time to get the answer, and that's okay. I'll give you a shortcut for multiplying even faster. There's something called the square of a number, which many of you know is taking a number and multiplying it by itself. For instance, 5 squared would be 25, 6 squared would be 36, 72 squared would be something big. Right. 
Now, most of your calculators have little shortcuts for squaring. I'll show you on this one. Oh, yeah, you already know it. Okay. On this one, though, to square a number like 5, you press 5, then times, and then equals. And that'll be square. Yeah, magic. What I'm going to try and do now is to square in my head four two-digit numbers faster than they can do on their calculators, even using the shortcut method. But I can't do it faster. I don't have my markers. Um, so, uh, what I will ask, um, we'll ask is four people, uh, how about in the, uh, um, okay, your hands are up, in the first row, you're one, two, three, four, each yell out a two-digit, say we just yell out a two-digit number, and if you would square the first, the second, the third, and the fourth one, I would try and race you to the answer. So, quickly, a two-digit number, please. 32. 32 squared, okay, next. 84, next. 79, 79 and one more. 99. 99. Would you call out your answers, please? 1,024. 7,056. 6,241. And finally, give them a round of applause. Let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square some three-digit numbers this time. I won't even write these down. I'll just call them out as they're called out to me. Anyone at all call out a three-digit number. Anyone on our panel, verify the answer. If I get the answer right, either give me a thumbs up or show your answer. If I make a mistake, let me know and I'll try and fix it. A three-digit number, sir? 200. 200 and? 256. 256 squared is 65,536. Check that out, yes. Good. Another uh, another three-digit number, go ahead. 523 is 273,529. 273529, good. How about another three-digit number? What was that? 132 is 17,424. 17424, okay, sir, how about you? 947. 947 is 896,809. Eight, I'm good. I'm not sure that one. How about one more? One more three-digit number. Uh, go ahead. 333 is 110,889. Thank you very much. Let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square a four-digit number this time. I will not answer on this one. You guys are getting pretty quick, but I will try to get the answer right. To make this a little bit more random, how about four people from, um, how about from the second row here? One, two, three, four. Each yell out a single digit between zero and nine. That will be the four digit number that I'll use. Five. Five. Six. Four. Four. Three. Five, six, four, three. This will take me a little bit of time so bear with me, 31 million. Good. Thank you very much. I would attempt to square a five digit number and I can, but unfortunately some calculators cannot and I do want to embarrass them. <laughs> Well, and I'll talk to you about that later, but in the meanwhile, let me conclude the first part of my show by trying something even trickier. Let's take the last four-digit number that you gave me, 5643. Would you each enter 5643 on your calculator? And instead of squaring it this time, I'd like you to take that number and multiply it by any three-digit number that you'd like. But don't tell me what you're multiplying by. Just multiply it by any random three-digit number. So you should have as an answer either a six-digit or probably a seven-digit number. How many digits are in your answer? There's six. Or you have seven, 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 and seven. Is there any possible way that I could know what seven-digit numbers they have? Say no. no. <laughs> Then I shall attempt the impossible, or at least for my skeptics here, the improbable. What I'd like each of you to do is to call out for me any six of your seven digits, any six of them, in any order you'd like. I will try and determine the digit you've left out. 
So starting with your, six di your seven digit number, call out any six of them, please. And I'll repeat them so the audience can hear. Four, four nine, nine, eight, eight four, four, two, two seven. seven. Did you leave out the number two? That's one. You have a seven digit number, thank you. Another a six called six of them loud and clear. Three. 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 three five. five one, one. Six. six zero. zero. Ooh, this one's a little tricky. Uh, let me get back to it. Okay, don't forget, don't forget it. You've got a seven digit number. Any six of yours in any order. One. 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 one six. Six. Three. 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 Four. Four. I'm in trouble with yours too. Don't forget yours. I'll, I will get it. You got a seven-digit number. Any six of yours? Really scramble them up this time. Three. Three. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Two. 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 I think I've got yours. Did you leave out the number five? Good. The odds of me getting all four of these right by random guessing would be one in ten thousand. But I've got two troublemakers left here. Do me a favor, both of you, if you would concentrate on the digit you left out. It doesn't do any good, I know, it just looks dramatic. And yet, I seem to be getting a lot of nothing. Which of you left out a zero? I was getting, and you, well, that's why I was getting a lot of nothing. Let's give all four of these people a nice round of applause. For my next number, I'd like to present something we mathematicians refer to as magic squares. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with these, you can sort of think of magic squares as like Sudoku on steroids, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. Now, I've done such an extensive study on magic squares that I'd like to create one for all of you right before your very eyes. But for this, I'll need another assistant, someone here I do not know. And let's see, I do not know. Uh, let's see. I used you already. Um, how about, uh, okay, how about you? What's your name? Addison. Let's get Addison in my time. Uh, Spelling was not my best subject. Although your name is almost like addition, you know, that's kind of neat. Uh, so, Addison, this is really great. What I'm going to ask you now, if, 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 if uh, a question, and if it's too personal, I can change the question. Addison, are you willing to share with us your birthday, including the year? Great, Addison, what is your birthday? June 22nd, that's 622, 2010. Now, Addison, if we were to add the numbers in your birthday together, let's see what we get. 6 plus 22 is 28, plus 20 is 48, plus 10 is 58. So 58 becomes your magic number. What I'm going to try and do now, Addison, is to fill out this box in such a way as to get your magic number appearing here uh, as much as I possibly can. This will take me a couple of seconds, so bear with me here. I think that works. Addison, would you choose for us any row? Row number two, three, or four, which would you like? Four. All right, class, together. 22 plus four is? 26. 26. Plus 12 is? 38. 38. Plus 20 is? 58. 58. The others were 6, 28, 48, 58, 19, 30, 35, 58, 11, 32, 53, 58. Would you choose a column, Addison? One, two, three, or four? Four. All right, class. Ten plus twenty-three is thirty-three. 33. Plus five is thirty-eight. Plus twenty is fifty-eight. The others were six, twenty-five, thirty-six, fifty-eight, twenty-two, thirty-three, twenty-two, thirty-three, fifty-four, fifty-eight, twenty, twenty-five, forty-six, fifty-eight. How about that? since this was your magic square, based on your birthday, at no extra charge, I would give you these diagonals as well. Check it out here. 22 plus 21 is 43, plus 5 is 48, plus 10 is 58, 6, 17, 38, 58. But I didn't stop there either. I decided since this was for Addison, wouldn't it be 
great if we could get these four in the center to add up as well. well check it out. Here, 21 plus 11 is 36 plus 5 uh, is 32 plus 5 is 37 plus 21 is 58. But did I stop there? No. Did I stop there? No. no. As you may have noticed, I put a little extra attention in that corner. I did that so I could get these four squares. 6 plus 22 is 28, plus 11 is 39, plus 19 is 58 to add up. And I figured, heck, as long as we got that group of four, let's have a party. We may as well get this group of four. 20, 30, 50, 58, 11, 32, 36, 58, 21, 26, 46, 58. But did I stop there? No! no. I said Addison wouldn't be happy unless we got this group of four, 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 this group of four. Now I have to apologize, Addison. I was not quite able to get this group before or that group before to add up, but I had to do it that way if I was going to get these four in the corners. I knew that would be important to you. 6, 16, 36, 58, yes, she nods, yes. But wait, here's the cool part. Not only do those four numbers in the corners add to 58, if you look at them closely, you'll see we have 6, 22, 2010. I thought you'd like that. So please keep this as a souvenir for me. Let's all get to
Now, folks, if I were performing for a different sort of audience, I might follow this up with other feats of magic and mind. But for an audience such as this one, especially on a night that's supposed to be devoted to dialogue, I prefer to break the magician's rule and explain to you most of what you've seen me do up here and more. In fact, I'd like to conduct the rest of this program, the next 30, 40 minutes or so, very informally. So feel free at any time to interrupt me with questions about whatever's on your mind. Um, I've got hours and hours of stuff I can share with you. Um, who would like the first question? Now, I'm, as a professor in mathematics, I'm used to waiting for the question. Yes, you can get the first question. Oh, so you were in the morning program. I see. Okay. So she's asking a follow-up question to something that started happened this morning. Let me start by showing the audience the first thing, okay? All right. So um, one of the things I showed the lower grade students today was something that was one of my favorite tricks when I was, when I was her age, which was how to multiply any two-digit number times 11. Okay, now one digit numbers times 11, everyone said was easy, but, but two digit times 11 is also very easy. Um, let's say, uh, somebody give me a small two digit number, just as our first example. Oh, 11, how many, you know, 11 is, the, is very small, but it might be confusing since I'm multiplying it by 11. Give me a, another one. What was that, 32 did you say? So 32 times 11, is as easy to do as 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, and there's your answer. 3, 5, 2. Yeah. Let's, try. Let's do a couple more examples. Want to make sure everybody gets good at these. How about another, um, how about another, uh, here, I'll, I'll give you another two-digit number. Let's say it was 53 times 11. 5 plus 3 is 8. So what's the answer? 5, 3. All right, so here, one for everybody. Give me, say the answer as soon as I write it down, not just the middle number. I want to hear 81 times 11. What is it? 891. 891. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. <laughs> now, before you get too excited, I've only shown you half of what you need to know. Because what if the numbers add up to something bigger than 9? Suppose we had a problem like, say, 85 times 11. Now, 8 plus 5 is 13, but the answer is not 8, 13, 5, I'm afraid. We only have room for the 3, but the 1 makes the 8 carry, and the answer is 935. Exactly. All right, so <laughs> let's say, let's make up a, a bigger problem. Let's say the problem is 59 times 11. Now, 5 plus 9 is 14. So what's the answer? 649. You got it. All right. So now that you understand that, the, her question was, can you also do this for three-digit numbers times 11? I love that kind of question because it's showing me somebody who wants to look beyond what they're learning. So I think that's, those are the best kinds of questions. So, um, so here we go. Um, let's take, say, the, and so the answer is yes, and here's how. Let's take, say, the first three digits of pi, 3, 1, 4. If we multiply that by 11, the, it still begins with a 3. It still ends with 4. And to get the numbers in between, we do 3 plus 1, which is 4, four and 1 plus 4, which five. is 5. Five. All right, in fact, we could even take this a step further. If I want to multiply this number by 11, it'll begin with a 3, it'll end with a 4. Can you guess what comes in between? 7, seven and then 9, nine and then 9. nine. 37,994. Let's hear it for 11. Yay. Oh, so you see, we're 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 getting we're we're getting like the greatest hits from this morning show. So you know the answer to that. I'll tell you. What, she wanted to know if I could give like the first sixty digits of pi. I gave them a hundred this morning, um, and so the answer is yes. 
But you know what? Let me let me save that one for later if if we uh, if we need it. I, I've got a fun answer to that. But um, why don't you see if I can get some different questions uh, uh, right now? So um, other questions. What else? What else was there? Yes, please. How, oh, why the elevens works? Thanks for asking that. That's my other kind of question that I love, which is, you know, not just learning how, but why, right? What's, uh, um, as, as one of my books says, mathematics is not just solving for x, it's also figuring out why. <laughs> so, um, so, all right, so the reason this works is here, let me do one example of how you would multiply by 11. Let's take the number that's on the board, 314 times 11. Now, if you did that on paper, you would start by doing 1 times 314, which is 314, and then you'd have a 10 times 314, which would look like this. Do you agree with that? And now, if you were to add these numbers, well, what do you have? You have a 3 and a 3 plus 1, which is 4, and a 1 plus 4, which is 5, and a 4 plus 0, which is 4. So you're doing, you're getting those same interactions, right, with the 3 and the 1, and the 1 and the 4 are coming from the 3 and the 1, and the 1 and the 4. So it's, it's just that it's, um, by doing it this way, it looks a little bit more magical. It's a little bit easier to do in your head that way. Good question. Uh, what else would you like to know? Uh, any of the three of you look like uh, uh, Who would like a question? Ah, the, the magic square. How to, how to figure out the magic square. I, I'll show you that one. Although I will say um, there's a reason magicians don't explain that one. But this, this one's my own invention. So I will do it. But I, So I, I'm allowed to reveal it. But I will say um, there was a reason magicians don't uh, give away their secrets. It's because we've all made that mistake before, and we never get the reaction we want. We want people to say, wow, that's clever. You're good. But you never do. I mean, how have you responded most of the time that someone's shown you how a magic trick works? It's like, oh. I, that's dumb, right? I, I thought you were good, but I just wasn't paying attention. That's true of most magic tricks, including the magic square. So, you asked nicely, so I will show you the secret of the magic square, but just remember how impressed you were before I gave you the explanation, all right? Is that a deal? Okay, I'm counting on it. All right, so give us your birthday. We'll do your birthday. January 6th, 2008. Okay, so the first step in creating the magic square, the most important step, is you have to add these four numbers correctly. Because if you make a mistake here, there's not much you can do. All right, so 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 20 is 27, plus 8 is 35. And I write that nice and big for my audience to see and also for me to see because I'm going to be using that number a lot. Um, next, because you saw, you saw what we did before with the previous magic square, you know that the, that the numbers not only appear in the top row, but also in the four corners. That means that you know this number is going to be what? Six, Six right? Just from here. And that's the first number I write down. And what number is going to go here? 20. 20. But that's actually the last number I write down because I don't want to give it away. Um, <laughs> Next, and this is the only thing you have to remember, I now go up the diagonal, and for everyone in the audience who has a 20 here, so if you were born in the 2000s or later, all you have to remember is to write the number 21. Now, for someone born in January, I sometimes write a 19, because I'm going to get a negative number down there, but I'm going to give you the negative number. So I'm going to put a 21 right here. Okay, and now it becomes... And, oh, and if you're born in another year, like if you were born in 1986, and if I put 86 there, then if you have an 8 here, you put a 9. Just take this number, whatever number's there, and add one to it. Okay, so now it becomes like the easiest Sudoku you've ever tried. 
because you know that this diagonal adds to 35. And right now, I have three of the four numbers on the diagonal already. 6 plus 21 is 27, plus 8 is 35. So what number has to go here? Zero. Zero, exactly. Okay. Next, I go to this group of four, right? We knew in the previous magic square that, that I was able to get this group of four to add up. And, I, and I've got two, three of the four numbers already. 20 plus 8 plus 0 is 28. So what number goes here? 7. And how about this group of four? 20 plus 6 plus 0 is 26. That makes that a 9. And 1 plus 6 plus 9 is 16, makes that a 19. But here's good news. If you can remember that that's a 21, this is always a 19. And if there's a 21 here, we get a 19 there. But anyway, um, now remember earlier when uh, I had, um, uh, where is she? Where is, where is my assistant from? Addison. 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 Where, where is Addison? So remember with Addison's magic square. Addison, where are you? Raise your hand. Oh, thank you. Okay. You were standing up, but I couldn't see you. Okay. And, and so with Addison's magic square, um, remember I said I was not able to get this group of four or that group of four to add up. Don't even try. You would even see it. The number's pretty big. Um, uh, but that's the bad news. But the good news is the, uh, the good news is the way the, the algebra works, these two numbers are always the same, and those two numbers are always the same. So I just slide that 9 here. That makes that column add up. Now I go to the middle. 21, 9, and 0 is 30, makes that a 5. 21, 9, and 6 is 36. I promised you a negative number. Here it is. Uh, 21 plus minus 1 plus 5 is 25. That makes that a 10. Your brain's getting tired from all the adding and subtracting. So I say the easiest part's for last. This number's going to be what? Zero. Zero. And that number's going to be what? Zero. 20. And that's the secret of the magic square. so quickly? Did I memorize them all? Um, not an unreasonable question because I've been squaring numbers now for such a large fraction of my life that maybe some of them are memorized and it's probably the case that most if not all of the two digit squares have unintentionally become memorized. I didn't sit down to memorize them but I probably know the two digit squares especially the ones below 50 um, by heart at this point. Uh, but the three-digit squares and larger, I really, really do have to calculate. Let me show you the method I use for squaring two-digit numbers, and then if you're interested, we can push it up higher to three-digit numbers or beyond. Um, give us a, give us a two-digit number just to get started. Go ahead. 35. Oh, and I really like it when the numbers end in five. Let me say that as a second example because I don't because they're not as because those are especially easy. Um, let me do another small two-digit number. Go ahead. 57. What was that? 57. 57. That's not the smallest of two-digit numbers. <laughs> kind of thought you'd make it smaller than 35. I'll tell you what, I'll do 57, but look, but look give me a number small. You want 27. 27. Why not? Okay, so 27 is not a bad number to multiply, but what number close to 27 is easier? 30. So I'm going to go up 3 to 30, and to balance it, I go down 3 to 24. So instead of doing 27 times 27, that's the problem I want, I do 30 times 24. Now that's not so bad. That's 3 times 24 with a friendly 0 attached. I'll save the zero for later. Three times 24, if you do it from left to right, three times 20 is 60, three times four is 12, 60 plus 12 is 72, so 30 times 24 is 720. Almost done. All you have to add to this is the square of the number you went up and down. You went up and down three, 3 squared is 9, 
and there's your answer, 729. Yeah. So here, let's do another one. Let's say we were doing 35 squared. You'll find this is even easier. Now the nearest easy number is, well, you can either 30 or 40. I'll go down 5 to 30, and to balance it, I go up to what? 40. 40, right? And 30 times 40 is, you tell me? 120. 1,200, or 1,200. And what do we add to this? The square of 5, which is 25, and there's your answer, 1,225. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Here, um, so, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's hear it for algebra. Okay. Algebra, raise your hand. Okay, I know some of you are took it or it took you. I'm not sure which. But um, I, I, so enough of you have seen it. I, I, and the math professor in me says I want to show you why this method works. Um, so here, and it will only last for 30 seconds here, but this is it. To square a number like a, a could be anything. That's why I call it a. Then what I'm doing is I take a and I go up some distance, D, I take the same number, A, I go down the same distance, D, multiply them together, and then add what? D squared. Now, is that going to work? Well, if we take A plus D times A minus D, those that still know your algebra, what do you get? If you take A plus D times A minus D, it's A squared minus D squared. And when you add the d squared, the d's go away, and you're left with what you want, a squared. Let's hear it for algebra. Really? <laughs> now, I'm not thinking of the algebra while I'm doing the calculating, but the, um, the fact that I know the algebra gives me the confidence to know that this is going to work, whether I'm squaring a two-digit number or a three-digit number or higher. Let me do a three-digit number, which I'm Unless you call out one of the easy ones or the ones that I get all the time, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> six, 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 I don't know why. Uh, nine, nine, nine. Um, so if, uh, so uh, give us a three digit number and, uh, okay, what three digit number would you like? That's a great one. 298 squared is 88,804. Now that one might have been too easy. It looks hard because those numbers are big. But think of it. You said 298, so the nearest easy number would be 300. So I go up 2 to 300, down 2 to 296. Then do 300, or 3, times 296. I'll attach the zeros later. Now, maybe this is the time to really emphasize what may be the most important thing to know of what I do up here is that I do all of my calculating from left to right. And that's the opposite of how you do it on paper. On, on paper, you usually learn to do it from right to left, right? You get the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and so on. But that's backwards. You read numbers left to right. You pronounce numbers left to right. You say 729, not 9 and 20 and 700. And with a little practice, you can and should calculate left to right. So I can do 3 times 296, well, two different ways. The way I usually do it is I just do a one digit at a time. 3 times 200 is 600. 3 times 90 is 270. 600 plus 270 is 870. 3 times 6 is 18. That gives me 888. But I'll bet you'd find it even easier to say, wait, multiple 300 times two, 3 times 296. What number is even easier than 296? Multiply it by 300. 3 times 300 is 900. But that's too much. We have to subtract from that 3 times 4. Because we were, um, 296 is 4 below 300. So that's 900 minus 12. Either way, you get 888. Now I attach the two zeros, add the square of 2, which is 4, to get, if you remember what I said earlier, 88,804. 
Now, if I want to squint, now if the number isn't that close to 300, I'll still round it to the nearest hundred. I'll do one last example of a three-digit square. Somebody give me another three-digit number. Who, who gave me like the number 67 or 50 okay. earlier? Okay. You did. Okay. Give me a uh, give me a three-digit number instead. Um, six, oh. No, no, not O. Oh, that would be too easy. I want I want I want to make it harder. Six fifty-eight. Six fifty-eight. Great. So six fifty-eight squared is. 432,964, and again, not memorized, I'm calculating it exactly what you're going to see. I'll do this in fast time so you can get a sense. I go up 42 to 700, down 42 to 616, 7 times 616 is 4200 plus 112 is 4312, with the two zeros is 431,200, plus a square of 42, which I know is 1,764, <laughs> yeah, goes from left to right, and we get 432,964. Thank you very much. What's your question? I will, but that's my grand finale. <laughs> and we're about 20, 20, 30 minutes away from that, okay? So, um, but but, I, but don't forget that. I, that's my promise to you. I will, by the end of the night, I will square a five digit number. Yes, please. Yes. yes. How did I know the day of the week? But the short answer is uh, it's mathematical. <laughs> no kidding, right? But everything I'm doing up here is based on mathematics. Um, I'm taking a, uh, all the, all, and, I'm, and I'm applying a formula that I do pretty quickly, where I take a number that comes from the year, from the month, and from the date, add those numbers together, and the total tells me the day of the week. Okay, so that's the, that's, the short answer. The really, the long answer, I think I'm going to abstain on right now, but um, I will, I'll do a short segue. If you really do, well, first of all, if anyone really wants all the details, see me after the show, happy to stay on longer. But I also have, uh, if you're interested, and I'll, 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 I'll make this commercial short, um, I brought with me some of my DVD courses that explain everything I know about various subjects. So my most popular one is on the secrets of mental math. So what you're seeing here tonight, everything I know about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, squaring, figuring out the birthdays, memorizing numbers, um, estimation, everything. Um, in this course, it has two DVDs, 12 lectures, 30 minutes each. That comes with a workbook with hundreds of problems and exercises and explanations. They sell this course. It's produced by the Great Courses, the teaching company. Anybody get the, get the stuff, right? Great, high quality stuff. Um, hundreds of courses on all on all sub academic and even non-academic subjects. Um, I've had the pleasure of creating four different courses for them. And this one's the most popular one. Uh, they sell this course on, when it's not on sale, when they sell this online, they sell it for like $199. Uh, I sell it here for $40, so if you're interested, see me afterwards. Um, that's on math in your head. Here Here's another popular one, which is math in your school. It's called the Joy of Mathematics. It's middle school and high school level mathematics. Algebra, geometry, trigonometry, the joy of pi, the joy of, of infinity, Fibonacci numbers. Um, it has 24 lectures, twice as many as the other course. Uh, I want you not just to learn the mathematics, I want you to come away liking the mathematics. And um, anyway, twice as much as the earlier, course, but I don't sell it for twice as much. It's just $60. I have a course on, if you ever wanted to take me to Vegas, I have a course on mathematics of games and, and, and puzzles, everything from card games uh, like, uh, like uh, poker or blackjack, casino games, you know what they are, uh, to solving uh, any Rubik's Cube, solving any Sudoku. Um, it's got three DVDs, sells for $50. And the last course, my most advanced course, um, is on the mathematics, is discrete mathematics, which is the math that underlies computer science and cryptography. Um, it's, uh, it's what I teach at Harvard Mudd College, what I've taught for the last almost 30 years there. And uh, that also sells for $60. There's a discount if you get three or more. Uh, in all four of them for $190, that's less than 
Um, that's less than any one of them online. So that's the end of the commercial. Um, except to say, um, one quick commercial for my college, because um, when I'm at a school like this one, they really want the students and all, all, of your, all of the students here are prospective Harvey Mudd College students. So let me just say one word about them, or two words or so. Harvey Mudd, if you say it quickly, it sounds like Harvard Med. <laughs> My grandmother still thinks I'm at Harvard Med. He's a doctor. I'm Johns Hopkins. He's now at Harvard Med. Uh, and, uh, but Harvey Med College, pretty impressive too. It's got um, 900 students all of whom major in math or science or engineering. One third of our students, maybe it's down to a quarter, uh, go on to get PhDs. The rest of them are getting great jobs. They have like the highest mid-career salary of any school in the country. Um, they are, one third of their courses are in the liberal arts, so they know the impact their work will have on society. And here's a statistic I could not have told you 10 years ago. Today, half the students at Harvey Mudd College are women. Wow. I think that's a great thing. Um, not true when I started 29 years ago when the ratio was more than 3 to 1, guys to girls. In fact, uh, the, the guys would say that the, um, you know, that the ratio is more like pi to 1. Uh, the women said, as far as finding a guy there was concerned, they said the, the, the odds were good, but the goods were odd. <laughs> That might still be true today, but don't tell them I said that. Anyway, so if you love math or science, you know, like you would do something like come out on a Tuesday night to hear a math talk, well then, you're the kind of person that Harvey Mudd College is looking for, so hopefully you'll apply there when it's your turn. Um, okay, end of commercials. Other, uh, other questions, what else? Uh, way in the back, what's your question? Well, okay, that's a good question. So, she's got I score 737.7. .7. So that's like a four-digit number. In theory, I could just square the four-digit number you gave me and then say times 10 to the minus 2. Um, but but it's, it's trickier because when I'm squaring a four-digit number, I'm used to the answer being in the millions and, and the words lining up in certain ways. So the answer is yes, but not as quickly as if you had done it without the decimal point. So I'm not going to fumble over it right here, but uh, so I, cause it, I, I'd say there'd be a 50% chance that I'd get it wrong. And, and by the way, for all the students in the audience, it's okay to get things wrong. It's okay to try things and fail. Maybe not fail, fail, but you know. But, but not get things right, you know, make mistakes, uh, not, not do perfectly, that's, 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 that's quite okay. Um, yes, sir, what's your question? If you were to play poker, could you count cards? Ah, if I were to play poker, could I count the cards? I do count cards when, I, when playing blackjack, um, which gives you just a tiny, tiny, tiny advantage. Not even an advantage worth, um, you know, writing home about. The game that I play the most, though, that I do consider myself to be, uh, uh, very good at is backgammon. Yeah. Now the parents, your parents all played it, you know, when they were in high school and college. But um, it, I don't know any game that where a little bit of math goes such a long way. Um, and in fact, I'm on the board of directors of the U.S. Backgammon Federation. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah. So what's that? There you are. Oh my God! Well, let's talk afterwards. Uh, what What do you play for? Never mind. Uh, bragging rights. Bragging rights. That's good. No, no I, I, I I go on and on about the game, but I just uh, and and games had an impact on my development in math. A lot of a lot of the math I learned initially when I was when I was in elementary and middle school was I found that the more I knew the math, the more I would win at the games that I liked playing, and so. Uh, there was a real a reward for being good at math. Um, I also like math just because it's kind of fun and beautiful, that you can take a problem, do it lots and lots of different ways, and if you're careful, you always get the same answer. And I found that consistency in math to be absolutely beautiful then, and I still do today. Okay, I think now it's time for that pie question, okay? All right, so what was your question again? 
How many digits of pi do I know? About 100. Um, let me write as much as I can on this board. Uh-oh, I hear somebody chanting the numbers. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Maybe you're chanting the numbers that I'm writing. I mean, is Arjun in the audience? Today? <laughs> we had a student here this morning who could do 120 digits of pi. I had him check my work by reciting them to the audience. <laughs> this here are the first 60 digits of pi, anyway. Thank you very much. So let me say, so let me say a few words about pi. So how I would memorize this. Um, now, uh, the, the process that I use, and I actually use this in my mental calculations, as you'll see when I do my grand finale, um, but uh, the way I learn this is it actually uses a system that turns numbers into words. So for those of you in the audience who like words more than numbers, this may be your favorite part of the show. So every digit gets a consonant sound. This is a code that's been in the English language for over 200 years. It's called the major system. Um, and here's what it is. So for example, the one is the T or the D sound, the T or D sound. The two is the N sound, the three is the M sound, and so on. And there are even little mnemonics for learning the list. I went over with some of the kids this morning, like a T has one downstroke, the N has two downstrokes, the M has three downstrokes, four ends in R, five you can see an L, and so on. I'll let you figure out some of the mnemonics for the other numbers. And once you have that, you can now take numbers even random looking numbers like digits of pi and turn them into words. You can do this for phone numbers, birthdays, credit card numbers. Here, somebody give me their credit card number right here. <laughs> no? All right, I can't remember it. All right, so instead, let's do, uh, let's do digits of pi instead. So um, let's say the first three digits of pi. We have a three, one, and four. And so let's see, what are those? That's M. One is a T or D, four is an R. And now you can let vowels come into the picture. You can put vowel sounds wherever you'd like. What are some words you could create from three, one, four? Words like, say it out loud. Motor or meter. Meteor, I got a lot of science words, I love them. Me oh, meteor right. If we actually went one digit further, you actually could get meteor right. You're right. That's good. Um, uh, matter. Even the word matter, which is spelled with two T's, uh, the, the T sound only happens once. So, um, so uh, let's take this to five digits here. I'm going to put another five, with the five which is L. So for me, the first five digits of pi, especially if you were in my audience this morning, becomes what? My turtle. My turtle. And my turtle can only turn back into three, one, four, one, five. Now if you have the time to study the numbers, you can actually create silly sentences out of them. Things like, my turtle poncho will my love pick up my new mover ginger. <laughs> of course. My turtle poncho will my love pick up my new mover ginger. If you say that sentence five times, you'll unfortunately have it memorized. But with that, you have the first 24 digits of pi. The next 17 digits, which start off 338, or MMV, becomes my movie monkey plays in a favorite bucket. But, but I like the next 19 even more. They say, ship my puppy Michael to Sullivan's back rubber. <laughs> Those are your first 60 digits of pi. If you want to get to uh, 100 digits, I won't write them down, but I'll give you the next two sentences. They are a really open music video, Cheers Geneva Jones, followed by 
have a baby fish knife so Marvin will marinate the goose chick. Thank you very much. <laughs>
not not a, not exactly one that brings the audience to its feet, but it's, uh, <laughs> but that's the first. But you know, it's great. I love that question. I'll have to think about it because later on, I think um, if I have other fun uh, geometry tricks, yeah, I'll have to think about that one more. Good question. Let me ask. Let me get another another question. Turn up here. Yeah. Did you ever tell your mom? Did I ever tell, no, I think I told my mom that she wasn't good at math, but I feel very bad about that. I feel terrible about that. Um, uh, but, but everybody eventually gets a little bit of a wall. No matter how good you are, no matter how smart you are, you, you will start reaching problems. That, and these aren't problems maybe that your teacher is giving you. These are problems that are just out there, that the, that the world is looking for solutions for. And, and, and I don't know any mathematician who can solve every problem that comes their way. So that's called research. And for a lot of us, that's exciting. That's fun. And we, you see a challenge, and maybe you can answer the problem, or maybe you can answer a slightly different problem and still get something interesting. And um, I got a B in algebra, I'll tell you that, when I was in, in uh, eighth grade. They did not recommend me for the honors geometry course in ninth grade. Um, I got a D on a math test in 11th grade for not showing my work. <laughs> because I like to do everything in my head. I still remember, I answered a problem and the uh, teacher said, uh, you know, I, I, I got zero points on one of these problems. He said, he said, I said, the answer's right. He said, you, you didn't show your work. I said, I, I did it in my head. He said, you did all that in your head? I said, yes. He said, uh, he said, well, then you're a better man than I am. <laughs> and I wanted to look at him and say, well, then as your superior, I <laughs> but, uh, but I learned to show my work. And I really think that was a very valuable lesson. I still came out of the semester with an okay grade and, 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 and everything after that. But um, I mean, and, and, and I, when I speak to groups, right, to schools, and I speak to audiences of gifted children, especially, um, and their parents always say the same thing. How can we get them to show their work? How can we get them to write things down? And I think the answer to that is you appeal to their ego and you say, look, one day you're going to work for somebody who's not as smart as you. <laughs> and they're, they're not going to be paying you the big bucks for your answers. They're going to be paying you for your explanations. So you're going to have to be able to convince people in a clear, concise way why your answer is right. And that's why it's important to show your work. Right? So I'll say that. Um, uh, 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 maybe one more question, then I'll launch into my grand finale. Um, uh, let's see, any parents have any questions? Yes, sir. Can you show square? How do you find square roots? Oh, how do I do square roots? 53. Okay, how would I square a number? Let's take the square root of 53. The short answer is it's in my mental math course. But, 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 but I'll tell you what, I use a process called divide and average. So 53 is between 7 squared and 8 squared. So I know that the square root is somewhere between 7 and 8. I divide 7 into 53 and I get 7 and 4 sevenths. 7 with a remainder of 4. And so my estimate of the square root is 7 and 4 fourteenths. That is 7 and 2 sevenths. That is 7.2857. I'm going to say that the answer to the square root is between 7 point, is definitely less than 7.3, and is probably at least 7.2. So some, somewhere, somewhere around 7.28. Okay? Now, if someone has a calculator and can tell me what it is, that'd be great, but I'm going to say it's around 7.28. Okay, so that's the method. Anyway, okay, last, uh, last calculation now. And again, anyone who has more questions, I've seen me after the show, I'll be hanging out at my table, I'll be signing autographs and anything you want. Um, if uh, I'm going to try to square a five-digit number, as promised, but to make my job more interesting for you, as well as for me, I'm going to do this last problem thinking out loud. So you can actually honestly hear 
What's going on in my mind while I do a calculation of this size? Let's create a five-digit number. Let's get a row of people to do um, to give me a five-digit number. Okay, third row here, starting with you. The first five, you pull out a single digit. That will be my five-digit number. Starting with you, you seven, eight, seven, eight, three, nine. Was that a five? Did I get five? 78,395 squared. Let me explain to you how I'm going to attempt this problem. I'm going to break the problem down into three parts. I'll do 78,000 squared plus 395 squared plus 78,000 times 395 times 2. Add all those numbers together and with any luck arrive at an answer. Let me recap. Thank you. <laughs> While I explain something else. As I do this last calculation, you might hear certain words, not just numbers, but actual words enter the calculation. You now know what this is. Most of my audiences don't. I'm using the phonetic code that you saw earlier, and I'll leave it up here so you can see. One last instruction for my judges with calculators. Now, who has an answer? Raise your hand. A couple of you, good. You should have a 10-digit answer, beginning with six, ending with five, in between, I don't know yet. There's a 50% chance that I'll make a mistake somewhere in the middle. If I do, don't tell me what the mistake is, just say you're close, and I'll try and figure it out, which can be pretty entertaining in itself. If, however, I am right, whatever you do, don't keep it to yourselves. Make sure everybody knows that I got the answer right, because this is my big finish, okay? So, without any more stalling, here we go. I'll start the problem in the middle with 78 times 395. Now, 395 is 400 minus 5. I'll take advantage of that. So, 400 times 78 is 31,200 minus 390. 31,200 minus 390 is 30,000. 810. Double that to get 61,620. 61,620 becomes um, shoot genes. Shoot genes is 61. Shoot 620 is genes. Okay, shoot genes. Haven't said any part of the answer yet, but I'm about to. Okay, next I do 78 squared, which is 6,084. So I can say 6 billion. Take the 84 and add that to shoot. 84 plus 61 is 145 million. Jeans, jeans, jeans. Okay, finally we do 395 squared. That's 400 times 390 plus, plus 5 squared. That's 25. 156,025. 025 is snail. Take the 156, add that to jeans to get, oh boy, 776,025. <laughs> And it was 7.28. Great. 